Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our series on partnership accounts and we are going to look at another factor that causes a change in partnership, which is the accounting treatment for retirement or death of a partner. We want to look at the accounting treatment and how to pass entries into the books of accounts in a situation where a partner dies or a partner retires or there is a withdrawal of a partner or a dismissal. In any case, when a partner is leaving, what are the accounting arrangements? And that is what we are going to focus on now. Remember that we have already spoken about a situation where there is an admission of a partner. We spoke about goodwill, where goodwill is to be maintained in the books and where goodwill is to be written off from the books. We also spoke about a situation where there could be revaluation of partnership assets due to that change. Now, those conditions that we saw from the admission of a partner is the same that we are going to see in the death or retirement or withdrawal of a partner. The only difference is that in the first scenario, a partner was being admitted to join. And in this case, a partner is leaving. Now, in a case where there are only two partners, if one partner dies or retires or is withdrawn, then it becomes no partnership. In other words, the partnership may cease to exist. So that kind of retirement may lead to a, a dissolution because one person cannot form a partnership under the Partnership Act. Now, in a case where there are three or more partners, if one partner retires, dies, or withdraws, the partnership will still continue because there are two or more people left in order to continue the partnership business. And so let us take note that a, a, a withdrawal or a, a a retirement of one partner can lead to a dissolution of the partnership as well. And so in this case, what we are going to learn is that we are going to learn about accounting arrangements under the situation where a partner is retiring and there are more than two partners to continue the partnership business. In a case where it will lead to a, the dissolution, the accounting arrangement will be the same as that of the dissolution, which I have already taught and uploaded on this channel. And so just uh, go with me as I take you through the accounting arrangement for death or retirement of a partner in a situation where the partnership business will continue to exist. And then the revaluation may apply, goodwill will be revalued or will be valued if there wasn't. And we should understand that almost everything that we have learned with the admission of a partner applies. The only difference is that here the partner is living and so we prepare all the accounts and make sure we pay off his capital account balance and then his current account balance in a case where they are maintaining a fixed capital account system. And that is what we are going to do. So I won't waste much time with the explanations. Let us learn by doing. So I'm going to take a question. And this question that I'm going to solve is an ICAG past question. This is of Chartered Accountants past question from November 2021, where they were required to account for retirement of a partner. So let us look at the question together and let us solve it together. Ajay, Bobo and Dagu have been in partnership for some years, sharing profits and losses in a ratio three is to two is to one respectively. The partnership statement of financial position as of 30th June 2020 was as follows. So we have the assets column, we have the non-current asset. We have premises to be 80,000, office equipment to be 58,400. We have motor vehicles to be 45,000, giving us uh, 183,400. Under the current asset, we have inventory 28,600. We have trade receivables 25,800 Ghana CDs. We have bank, which is 5,650. So the total asset being 243,450. Now, under the equity and liabilities portion, we have the capital accounts and the current accounts. So what is it telling us? It's telling us that this partnership is maintaining the fixed account, the fixed capital account system. And that is why they are maintaining current accounts as well. So capital accounts, a J95,000. Bobo's balance is 60,000 and then Dago is 50,000. Ghana cities. And the current account, a J's balance is 15,200 positive. Bobo is 7,040 positive, but that of Dago is 10,200 negative. Now, a negative current account balance means that 
their partner has overdrawn that account and that is a debit balance on the current account. We know that both capital accounts and current accounts have credit balances. And so if there is a negative for a particular partner, that is a debit balance. So please take note of that. And then we move on to the next one. We have current liabilities. Under current liabilities, we have trade, trade payables, 26,410. And that gives us total capital and liabilities of 2, uh, 243,450. Now there is an additional information for us to look for. The partners have agreed that the following should take effect on 1st July 2020 upon the retirement of Dago. So Dago is retiring. Dago is retiring. We continue. So these are the accounting, these are the agreements or what should take effect upon the retirement of Dago. The first one says that goodwill is to be valued at 60,000 Ghana cities and will not remain in the books of accounts. Take note, it will not remain. Next one, premises are to be revalued to 116,325. That is a revaluation. Dago is to take inventory costing 8,400 and a motor vehicle with a net book value of 20,500 as part settlement of his capital. I'm going to explain that to you as I solve the question. Then the next one says that a specific allowance for receivables is to be made for 5,300 owed by an individual customer. In addition, a general allowance for receivables is to be made at 5% of the remaining trade receivables. So we'll look at that as well. Then the next one says, a J and Bobo will continue in partnership sharing profits and losses in the ratio three is to two. So that means that after the retirement, the partnership continues. That goal will transfer 12,000 Ghana cities to a loan account to be repaid in full in 2025. No loan interest will be charged on this amount. And the final one says that the remaining balance from combining both doubles capital, sorry, <clears throat> the remaining balance from combining both Dago's capital account and current account will be paid from the business bank account required. Prepare the partner's capital account on 1st July 2020 to show the retirement of Dago II. Prepare the partnership statement of financial position as at 1st July 2020. Okay. All right, so this is the question that we are going to solve now. The requirement says we should prepare the capital account. Now, we see that this partnership maintains the fixed capital account. Now, the fixed capital account is a capital account where they also maintain the current account so that a lot of um, changes will not be made to the capital itself. Now, we are told to prepare capital account. We are supposed to pay a combination of both Dago, Dago's capital, the one who is living, uh, and then a current account, we combine and then we pay to him. Now, in this case, what we can do is that we can just combine the current account and the capital account, and then maybe prepare them together as one, and then prepare the statement of financial position. That will give us the same balance at the end. But remember that the partnership is going to continue because we've even been given the new profit or loss sharing ratio. So what I want us to do, according to the principles that I have taught, is that once they are operating the first capital account system, let us show the current account separately, show the capital account also separately. And then when we are done, we can transfer the one who is living, Dago, his, his current account balance into the capital account so that we can pay him off from there. And then the business continues, leaving the current account and the capital account intact for the other partners who are not living. And so that is the approach that I want to take, okay? So, Yes, if you see another solution that is combining both, that will be it. But that I'm, I'm trying to let you understand that once they are maintaining the first capital account system and the business is not being dissolved, let us go by the current account and the capital account system. So we are going to prepare the capital account separate from the current account, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. But before we go there, there are some workings to do, and let us look at the adjustment again and look at what we are going to start with first. Now, the first additional information says, talks about goodwill. 
that goodwill is to be valued at 60,000 and will not remain in the books. Now, if goodwill will not remain in the books, then we have to prepare a separate goodwill account, share it, just like I taught you in the admission of a partner um, accounting arrangement. So we are going to create a goodwill account, but we are not going to let goodwill maintain in the books. So what we are going to do is that we are going to share the goodwill for the existing partners in their old ratios, and then we are going to share for the new partners in their new ratios, so that the one who is going out will gain. Okay, let me explain that to you through the solution. And so the first working that I'm going to do, workings, is to prepare the goodwill account. Show your currency sign, Ghana City. All right, so according to the question, now the goodwill, the value of goodwill is 60,000 Ghana cities. But according to the question, a J, Bobo, and Dago shares profit in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 1. And then after the retirement of Dago, the new partners will share 3 is to 2. Okay, so that is what we are going to do. And I have told you that anytime you are creating a goodwill account, even though goodwill is a non current asset, we know that we should debit 60,000 here because the goodwill value is 60,000. So we should debit the goodwill account with the 60,000. But we don't just debit with the whole 60,000. We debit by sharing. So I'm going to debit here with 60,000, but I'm going to share for the old partners in their old ratios. Now, if it was an admission of a partner, there would have been only two partners and then we are bringing in a third. So only the old partners of two would have received. But now they are three, so we share for all of them. Because this is the opposite of the admission. This is a retirement. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to have goodwill for a J, which is going to be the total ratio, 3 is to 2 is to 1, is going to be 6. So it's going to be 3 over 6 times 60,000. And that is going to give us 30,000 30, Ghana cities. And then that of Bobo will be 3 over 6 times the same 60,000. That gives us 20,000. And then finally, Dago, 1 over 6, which is the total ratio, times 60,000. That gives us 10,000 Ghana cities. So what I have done, basically, is that I have debited the Goodwill account with 60,000, but I did by sharing. If Goodwill was to be maintained in the books, we would have just done a balance carry down, put 60,000 here, we'll have a balance brought down of 60,000. And that means that in our redrafted statement of financial position, we would have shown 60,000 as a value for goodwill. However, we are told from the question that goodwill is not to be maintained in the books. It should be written off. And to write off goodwill means you have to also credit the account with the same 60,000. But this is the rule. After debiting with the existing partner's ratio, you now credit with the new partner's ratio. And so we are going to share the same 60,000 again on the credit side. But this time, the retiring partner is not going to get it. The retiring partner will not get only the two that will be remaining. Dago is living. And so the same 60,000, we are writing it off from the books. So we'll say a J. And they are, now the ratio is three is to two. So the total ratio will no more be six, it will be five. Three plus two is five. And so a J's share of the goodwill will be three over five times 60,000. And that is going to give us 36,000. And then that of Bobo will be two over five times the same 60,000. That is going to give us 24,000. So that in effect, when you add them up, you are going to have 60,000 for debit, 60,000 for credit. So we have written off goodwill from the books. But I'm going to show you the dynamics of this right now. Now, these are the dynamics. You see, the old partner got a share. But because he's living, the new partners are going to enjoy the goodwill that he's not going to enjoy some. So we are, when you see, all these things that we are doing, let me show you something. The correct narration is that I should have written here capitals. That's the correct thing. So I put here capitals. Then I put here also capitals. It could even be the current account. Because in this case, it's a first capital account system. So what we are trying to say is that this goodwill, okay, once we have debited goodwill in the name of capital or current account, then it means that this will go to the corresponding entry will be on the credit side of the current account. 
And by going to the credit side of the current account, it means that we are going to increase their current account balances by this. Now, what we have done on the credit side of the Goodwill account will appear on the debit side of their current or capital accounts. It means that we are going to decrease their balances. So when it came to the increasing of the balance, Dago got a share. But when it came to the decreasing, Dago did not get a share. The difference is that once AJ is gaining 30,000, he's also losing 36,000. And so, in other words, he's losing a net figure of 6,000. Bobo is gaining 20,000, but he's losing 24,000. So he's losing a net figure of 4,000. If you combine their net loss, 6 and 4,000, you are going to get 10,000. And that is what Dago is gaining. So in other words, they are going to work with their goodwill after Dago has retired. So they are combining to pay him off the goodwill he has worked to accumulate over the years. And that is the meaning of goodwill not to be maintained in the books. We share to the old partners, we share to the new partners in the ratios of both the old and the new. However, definitely the living partner must gain. If it was the admission of a partner, it would have been the other way around. And if you have any doubt, you can visit my video on admission of a new partner under goodwill. And then you revise that one as well. So this is how to go by the goodwill account. And then from the goodwill account, we can move on to prepare the revaluation account. And then we proceed to the capital and the current accounts. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is to prepare the revaluation account. So let us prepare revaluation account. Now, with a revaluation account, we are told that premises are to be revalued to 116,325. Now, the original value for premises in the trial balance is 80,000, 80,000 Ghana cities. So if it should be revalued to 116,325, we have to find the difference. It's an upward revaluation, and the difference is 36,325. And so we'll write on the credit side, Premises, 36,325. This is the difference. This is the upward revaluation value that we have. Now, apart from that, I did not see any non-current asset being revalued. Okay, so the only thing that we have to do next is about the allowance for receivables. You know, we are told that a specific allowance for receivables is to be made for 5,300 owed by the individual customer. So the specific allowance is still an allowance and it's a reduction on, you know, the reason why allowance for receivables or what we call provision for that for debt, the reason why it appears on the debit of the revaluation, I've explained in my video on revaluation, that this allowance reduces trade receivables and therefore being it a difference or a reduction in an asset, it should be on the credit side. So specific allowance, which is 5,300 Ghana cities. And then we are also told that in addition, a general allowance for receivables is to be made at 5% of the remaining trade receivables, of the remaining trade receivables. Now, take note very well that I have said it in my video on adjustment, and I have explained that anytime there is a specific allowance, before a general allowance, you must subtract the first specific allowance from the trade receivables before you apply the rate on the remainder, okay? In this case, the trade receivables value was 25,800 Ghana cities. That is if I'm right. And then there was a specific allowance the specific allowance is known to be 5,300. So what you have to do is that you have to subtract the specific allowance from the trade receivables before you apply your percentage on general allowance. So that will give us 20,500. And so what we have to do now is that our general allowance for receivables 
is going to be, we are told it should be 5%. So that is going to be 5% on 20,500. And that is going to give us 1,025. So this is going to be the general allowance. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that whenever you are given a general allowance and there had already been a specific allowance, don't go straight to apply the 5% on the trade receivables as we have been doing all the time. You need to first subtract the specific allowance. And once you have been able to subtract a specific allowance, the difference is what you apply your rate on to get a general allowance. And the general allowance is still going to reduce the trade receivables. And so it must appear also on the credit side of the revaluation account. So general allowance, 1,025. That is how we do it. At this point, going through the information, there are no other revaluations and there is nothing more. We did not incur any revaluation expenses from the question. So we can go ahead and find our profit or loss on revaluation and then share. And looking at the account, you could see that the credit side is more than the debit side. And therefore, that is going to be a profit on revaluation, which is going to be shared and given under the current account. So current account, we will say share of profits. Okay, so what we have to do is that we have to first of all, find the difference. Once we find the difference, then we can share the difference in their old profit sharing ratios. Now, if you look at this, it's 6,325, that's the total, and that is just the excess of it. So you could see that if you subtract this from that, you are going to have 30,000, exactly 30,000 as the difference. So we are going to share 30,000 for the partners in their old ratios. And so, a J has Three over six times 30,000, which is going to be 15,000 Ghana cities. Bobo has a share of profit of two over six times the 30,000 difference. That is going to be 10,000 Ghana cities. And then finally, Dago has one over six times 30,000, which is 5,000. And so we can peacefully rule off and put the total as 36,325. You can confirm that from your own calculators. And so this is the revaluation account. Now take note that all these are workings. So we did the first working for goodwill account, the second one for revaluation, and then there was a third for calculation of the general allowance, which of course was used to prepare the revaluation account. We are now going to the actual requirement to prepare the capital account, but we need to first of all prepare the current account like I have opted for in this case. I have opted to prepare the current account as well as the capital account in this case because we need to maintain the current account balances for the, as, for the continuing partners. And so don't worry, I'm going to prepare the current account as well as the capital account for you to see. Okay, all right, so now, let us go back and read the question and see if there is something we are leaving out before we start there. Now, we are told, we've dealt with the goodwill. We are told that in the third additional information, that goal is to take inventory costing 8,400 and a motor vehicle with a net book value as part settlement of his capital. So those ones will be taken to the capital account of Dago. All right. Okay, and then there is one important information, the last but one information says that Dago will transfer 12000 to a loan account to be repaid in full in 2025. No interest will be charged on this loan. So in other words, the final balance of Dago that we are going to pay to him, he is going to leave a part in the business for us, for the existing partners or the continuing partners, as a long-term loan, okay, which will be repaid in 2025, five years' time. Now, there will be no interest. That is only the good news that we have. If there was to be an interest payment, we would have looked at how to deal with it. If there was, maybe we'll look at the reporting year that we are working with and then see. But definitely, even if there will be an interest, it's going to be for subsequent periods. So there are no interests to bother on in this very case. Now, we are going to prepare our current account. And I've told you that this loan that is going to leave as well as the assets that he's going to take home will be charged to his capital account to reduce the final balance that will be paid to him. But let us first of all prepare the current account of the partners. So, um, we 
We are preparing the current accounts in columnar form. So partners current accounts. So we have for AJ, Bobo, and Dago. That is for the debit side. AJ, Bobo, and Dago for the credit side. Show your currency signs at all times. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> this is it. So we are going to start. We will start with the opening balances. Okay. So from the question, the opening balances, you know, from the opening statement of financial position, under the current account balances, a J and Bobo's accounts were positive, but that of Dago, 10,200 was in bracket, as you can see. So we are going to bring their opening balances. So on the credit side, we have a balance brought forward. For a J is... 15,200. For Bubu, it is 7,040. And then Dago's credit was a negative. So it will appear on the debit side as his own balance brought forward. Please take note that when the balance is a negative balance, it comes as a debit balance. That is 10,200 Ghana cities. All right. So now that we have brought their balances, then we continue. Now, listen. The current account is supposed to cater for all these changes that are happening. We don't want to touch the first capital account. That is what I'm trying to do. In this case, it is only that goes capital that I will touch eventually because I'm going to pay off the net capital. But for the partners that, is going, that are going to continue, per the rule, I don't want to touch their capital. And that is why I'm going to make all the changes in the current account. So let us please take note. So let us start from the goodwill. Remember that we prepared a goodwill account. On the debit side, we, we made some sharing of the goodwill on the debit and we made some on the credit. So we will exchange. The ones on the debit will appear on the credit. So the share of goodwill, according to their old ratios. I remember that the J received 30,000. Bobo received 20,000. And then Dago received 10,000. Ghana cities. So that is for the goodwill account. And then also on the credit side, there is another goodwill to share. But that one, remember that Dago did not get a share of that goodwill. And so we have 36,000 for a J. I'm just doing the corresponding entry for the double entry. And then 24,000 for Bobo. So this is how it's going to be. And there will be a dash for Dago. So that is what we are going to do with the goodwill. And then we come to the revaluation. Remember that we prepared a revaluation account and there was a profit on revaluation which we shared in their ratios. Three is to two is to one. Where AJ received 15,000, Bobo 10,000, and Dago received 5,000. That is a profit on the revaluation. And so revaluation, we have 15,000 for AJ, 10,000 for Bobo, and then 5,000 for Dago. So this is how we go about this. Please take note that all this could have been done in the capital account in a case where you are preparing on the basis of a fluctuating capital account concept. But in this case, I want to make sure that capital account is fixed. And except there is a reduction in capital or an additional capital introduced, I'm not going to touch their capital accounts. And that is why I'm doing all these things in the current account. So please take note of that. And so we will prepare and we add the revaluation. At this very juncture, there is nothing more to bring. So we can close it off and find a balance carried down for each of them. But remember that we cannot find a balance carried down for Dago because Dago is ceasing to be a partner. And the balance carried down concept is an application of the going concern concept. But Dago is not going with us. And so we need to close off his account. And what we are going to do is that we are going to transfer whatever balance, whether positive or negative, we we'll transfer that balance into the capital account so that we'll go and then pay him eventually at the capital account. And so let us try balancing it off and then closing off the current account. 
So the total for, let's do that of Dago first. So the total of Dago is 15,000 for the credit side. Debit is 10 to, meaning that it should be 15, because you know how to balance an account already. And the difference will be 4,800. This 4,800 should have been called a balance carry down. But we are not going to call it balance carry down. That is why I did it first. Whenever a partner is retiring or is, uh, is, die, is dead, sorry, the balance that should have been called the balance carry down will be transferred to the capital account. So that difference, instead of calling it balance carry down, you call it capital. This 4,000 needs to be transferred to his capital account. We want to pay him off from there. And now we can balance off for, balance off for the continuing partners. So for AJ, the total of AJ's credit side is 60,200, which appears to be the bigger. 60,200. So the difference will be called a balance carry down here. The difference will be called a balance carry down, and that is going to be 24,200. And therefore, we are going to have a balance brought down for a, J, a credit balance of 24,200. This is just about the concept of balancing of accounts. So you can confirm that with your calculators. And then when we come to Bobo's account, you will see that the debit is 24, the credit is more, the credit is 37,040. So that should be for both, 37,040. And so looking at the two, the difference will be 13,040. And that becomes the balance brought down for Bobo's current account. So these are the new balances for the current account. And please put them down because we are going to use them to redraft the statement of financial position. Okay. Having completed the current account, we are going to prepare the capital account using the same columnar form before we finally look at the statement of financial position. So I'm going to clean this and I'm going to prepare the capital accounts for the partners. Remember that we are transferring Dago's current account balance into his capital so that we can pay him off and give him a nice exit. All right. All right. So we are going to prepare the capital account as I have outlined. So this is the partner's capital account in the same columnar format. We bring the opening balances of their capital account first. So balance brought forward. The capital account of a J in the statement of financial position was 95,000. That of Bobo was 60,000. And that of Dago was 50,000 Ghana cities. So these are their capital account balances. Now, at this juncture, since there was no additional capital or capital reduction, none of the capital accounts of a J or Bobo is going to change. We are not going to change the capital accounts of a J and Bobo because we are operating the flag. Hey, sorry, we are operating the first capital account system. So remember and take note. The focus now is on Dago. Remember that there was a transfer of his balance from the current account, and I called it capital on the debit of the current. So when I come here, I'll call it current account. And the amount was 4,800. So in other words, this is his total money that he has now. He has this balance on his capital account, and he has gotten 4,008 on the current. So I have transferred that so that we'll pay him off, and then he leaves. Now, this is where the work is. We are going to pay him off this amount, 50 plus 48, that would be 50,800. The, sorry, 54,800. That is how much he is, is due him that we must, pay, we must pay. However, we should take note of the following, that there are some conditions. First of all, he's taking over some inventory at a value. So that must be subtracted before we pay the difference. Then he's also taking over a motor vehicle. We should look at the value of the motor vehicle and subtract because we cannot pay him off while he takes all that away. So every single asset that he takes home, must be subtracted from his capital. Listen to the logic. You are going home, we are supposed to pay you this amount. But you say you want this very vehicle, you want to take the vehicle along. Okay, take it along, but we will subtract from the value of your capital so that the difference will be paid you, so that you cannot cheat the company. You want some inventories to subtract so that we pay the difference. And then also we were told from the question that he's leaving 12,000 Ghana cities out of this amount as loan. He's giving it to the business as loan. 
So that will also be subtracted so that we pay him the difference. So that loan will be maintained in the business. So that is the meaning. It's like going for any external loan outside. So let us quickly effect those ones. So we are told that he took over inventory. So the inventory that he took over was at a value of 8,004. Remember that at the capital accounts side, since we are operating the fixed capital account system, we are only changing that of Dago because he's going away. The continuing partners remains untouched. That is my concept. Okay, then we continue. He also took over motor vehicle, 20,500. So he's taking away one of the motor vehicles and that is valued at 20,500. So we are crediting the capital account with the items he's taking away in order to reduce his final balance that will be paid to him. And then we are also told that he's giving us loan. So the loan must also reduce the amount payable. The amount of the loan is 12,000 Ghana cities. And these are the only three significant things that we were told concerning Dago. And so even though he has 54,800, he's taking this out, and then the difference will be paid to him. So let us now balance off the capital accounts. Let us now balance off the capital accounts. So for that of a J and Bobo, it's not going to ch change. So 95,000, 60,000, nothing changes. We have done all that will change in their current account. So we are going to get a balance carried down for them. But the balance carried down should be the last thing to be written. So let us find the difference. The total for Dago is 54,800. So that means we are going to have 54,800. Because the credit side is the bigger side. Then we compare. The difference between 54,800, when we add this three, we subtract, we find the difference. The difference to be paid to him is 13,900. And so... We have 13,900. This 13,900 is to be paid to him from the bank account. And so we write bank. Please take note. This should have been the balance carried down for Dago, but that is what we are paying off. So we write bank so that this amount will also reduce our bank balance in the statement of financial position. So after we have written bank here, we have closed off Dago's account, meaning we have paid him off. And then the rest will be a balance carry down for the existing partners. So 95,000 and 60,000. So it means we have a balance brought forward or brought down 95,000 for AJ, 60,000 for Bobo, meaning that their capitals were not changed. And then there is nothing more for Dago because we have paid him off and he's going out of the business. And so when you are redrafting your new statement of financial position, the inventory on the statement of financial position will be reduced by this amount, take note. The motor vehicle value will be reduced by that amount because it's gone off. And then your bank balance will also be reduced by this amount. Now, one thing you should note is that the bank balance that we have cannot pay off all this 13,000. The bank balance is 5,650 according to the question. And so if you have a bank balance of 5,006 and you are paying out 13,900, the difference will be an overdraft. So we are going to have a negative balance for bank, which is 8,250. So it's going to be a negative balance, okay? So you have this amount in your bank account, but you are supposed to pay this. So it means that the difference will be 8,250. And for banks, we can show it as an overdraft. So instead of the bank balance being a current asset, in the redrafted statement of financial position, this amount is going to show as a current liability in the name of bank overdraft. So let us take note. So that is it for the partner's capital accounts. And so the final thing to do now is to prepare the statement of financial position to reflect the continuing business. Okay. So we are there now. We are going to prepare a redrafted statement of financial position for the new business. So, AJ and Bobo, because Dago is out of the business now. So, we say statement of financial position. Assets. So, it will be assets the date of retirement. Assets, the date of retirement is. 1st July 2020.
So, for July 2020. Oh, So, let's show our currency signs. All right, so let me just go by the total asset weight. So, I begin with the non current assets. Now, under the non current asset, we have premises, which was revalued upwards. So, premises, there was a revaluation. The new figure is 116,325. And then also, there was an office equipment in the old. Statement of financial position, as you can see, office equipment. That one didn't change. There was no revaluation, and the going partner did not take any home. And so the value maintains as 58,400. And then there were some motor vehicles. Now, remember that the outgoing partner took out or took home some of the motor vehicle. And the value was 20,500. Now, in the original statement of financial position, we can see that the value of motor vehicles is 45,000. But because the going, outgoing partner took 2,500, we have to show that. And so we will say that if you open a bracket and say 45,000 minus 20,500, and that gives us a final figure of 24,500. So we are done with the non-current assets. So you need to show the workings in the statement of financial position to show that this value has been taken away by the withdrawn or retired partner. Now, remember that goodwill was revalued, but goodwill was not to be maintained in the books. So we wrote it off. If goodwill was to be maintained in the books, it would have been added to your non-current assets. So let us take note of that. So what will be done? We find our total for the non-current assets. All right, so the total of our non-current assets will be 199,225. So I put one underline. And then I'll come to current assets. Now, under the current assets, we have inventories. And then also, we remember that the outgoing partner took inventory away to the value of 8,400. So the original inventory in the statement of financial position is 28,600. So we have to subtract what was taken away. So it will be 28,600 minus 8,400, which is the value of inventory that was taken away. And that leaves us with inventory with a value of 20,200. And then we come to trade receivables. Now, in the statement of financial position originally, the value of trade receivables was 25,800, as you can see. But we were told there was a specific provision and there was a general provision, a specific allowance for receivables and a general allowance. So we have to subtract both the specific and the general from the value of the receivables. Now, the receivables value was 25,800, but the specific was 5,300. The general was 1,025. So it will be the original receivables minus specific allowance minus the general allowance. And that gives you the final value for trade receivables, which is 19,475. Now, the only thing that we had in addition in the statement of financial position was the bank. But now the bank, remember that it's now an overdraft. So this will be the only two current assets that we have. And the total will be 39,675. So when we combine the two, it gives us total assets. Total assets to the value of 238,900. 238,900. And then we can continue with the equity and liabilities. So we start with the equity portion where we are going to show our capital accounts balances for the, new, for the existing partners or the continuing partners. And we also show our current account balances. So with the capital account balances, a J's capital account was maintained as 95,000. Bobo's capital account was maintained as 60,000. But 
Dago is no more in the business, so we won't show anything about Dago again. Hey, just one underline, sorry. So that is it for the capital accounts. And then I continue on this page by showing you the current account balances as well. With the current account balances, we also have for AJ and then Bobo, Dago is no more in the business. Per the workings that we did, AJ's capital account, uh, current account balance was 24,200, and that of Bobo was 13,040, if you can refer or remember. And so that gives us a total of 37,240 as total for the current accounts. And then finally, we'll look at the liabilities. We start with a long-term liability. You, you see that in the question from the statement of financial position, we didn't have any long-term liability. We only had current liability, which is the trade receivable, uh, sorry, the trade payables. But remember that Dago is leaving 12,000 in the business as a long-term loan, and that must be shown as a long-term liability because it is loan. So under long-term liabilities, we have loan from Dago, and that is 12,000. And that is the only thing that we have under the long-term liabilities. And then we look at the current liabilities as well. Now, under the current liabilities, we had the trade, uh, trade payables, which was unchanged. So nothing happened to it, so the figure will not change. So the trade payables, according to the question, was 26,410. 26,410. But remember that there was also a bank overdraft. And the bank overdraft per our calculation that we did was 8,250. 8,250. So it means that the total current liabilities is going to be 34,660. All right, so now we have our total asset to be 238,900. So we have to add our capital plus current account plus the long-term liability, plus the current liabilities. And that is going to give us our total equity and liabilities, which is also going to be 238,900. So it has balanced with the total assets. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is how to go by the accounting arrangement in a case where there is a death, a retirement, a withdrawal, or a dismissal of a partner. This is how to go about the accounting arrangement. Thank you so much. In fact, there are more questions that may come along the way, but just take your time and listen, and then if you have any challenge, put it back on repeat and then listen. You can also comment and let us know how you feel about this video and how it has helped you. Remember to subscribe to this channel if this is your first time. Please subscribe if you are yet to subscribe. We'll meet again for another topic and another video. But until we meet another time, it is bye for now.